so now we come to the second phase of the uh, colonial uh, era. Uh, the, it is very important that the uh, idea of so-called self-determination after the First World War, the American President Wilson told the world that that is a, a quote, a free, open-minded and absolutely impartial adjustment of all co colonial claims based upon a strict observance of the principle that in, determ in determining all such questions of uh, sovereignty, the interests of the population concerned must have equal weight with the uh, equitable claims of the government whose title is to be determined. And uh, this actually uh, idea, this idea, this notion of self-determination had a very strong influence on the people of the colonies all worldwide. In Korea as well as in, Ch in China. You know that in Korea in, 19, ni in 1918 there is a movement called the Guangzhou Movement or Kongju uh, Incident. The colonial students uh, rose up against the, the Japanese colonial rule, came to a major clash. In, time, in China there was also the main force movement and uh, they were all aiming against the uh, Japanese so the uh, anti-Japanese movement were formed somewhere else and uh, therefore the Japanese government decided to send a civilian to, to, to be the governor general of Taiwan to pacify the Taiwanese because Taiwanese also urged a better treatment. And uh, therefore the, uh, from 19... 19 all we call it the Taiwanese uh, colonial rule as the uh, civilian rule. The civilians became governors of Taiwan. The first one would be the, the Deng Kenjiro. He was actually promoted as a baron and uh, served in Taiwan at the beginning of the Taiwanese colonial rule in the uh, board for civil affairs as the head of the, uh, in charge of uh, schools. So he became a, later on became a member of the parliament and became a member of the cabinets. So he was sent to Taiwan because he was familiar, familiar with the Taiwanese affairs. Sent to Taiwan and served in nine, from nine, between 1919 to 1923. And then the Ujida, was sent to Taiwan. He was a member of House of Peers and also was a, a, a member of the parliament and sent to Taiwan, served in Taiwan for a very short while. And then the Izawa. Izawa was very important. He was also a member of the House of Peers, served in Taiwan. And during his reign, he moved that they should set up a university in Taiwan. There will be the, uh, the, uh, we call it the a branch of the Imperial University, and then the uh, Taiwan University, which was actually founded in 1927. But the beginning of the construction started with him, Izawa. And then uh, Kamiyama, and then the Kawamura. There were all the uh, civilian governors between 1919 and 1936. The Izizawa, the Ota, Minami, and the, the Nagakawa. So, as you can see, the last civilian governor was served until September 1936 because 1936 Japanese decided to introduce the so-called quasi uh, wartime uh, system or the, uh, the, the quasi uh, wartime rule in Taiwan because they, they noticed soon the, uh, 
hostility between China and Japan was start. And also the Japanese decided to strengthen the ties or to fasten the, the, the policy of southbound expansion and decided to turn Taiwan into the marine base. Therefore, the, uh, a general, a, an admiral took over. And then, so the last stage of the Japanese foreign war again returned to the uh, military, or this time the uh, navy. So during this uh, period, the uh, infrastructure as well as the, uh, the uh, other improvement was really noticeable. For example, the city hall of Taipei was actually constructed. And this building, have you been to this building? It's still there in Ximending. Shiman area in front of it. Well, certainly this, you can see that uh, supposed to. This is actually buried in the high houses, right? But uh, if you should go there, it's called nowadays Zhongshan Hall, Zhongshan Tang. In front of it, you can see it's the uh, a, a monument in memory of the ending of this, the Second Japanese War, the Second World War, was newly erected there. And uh, a lot of people there used to play, uh, the young boys and used to kind of play the uh, skateboard there, right, in Zhongshan area. I, when I was a boy, we all went there to watch the uh, movies, free movies. So that's my memory of, my memory of the uh, Zhongshan Park. And the uh, schools for the Aboriginal children were also established. As we all know, that the Japanese police were actually in, char in charge of the uh, Aboriginal affairs. So in the police station, there is also, also a subordinated uh, little classroom <coughs> teaching the Aboriginal children to speak Japanese. Uh, Saturday we had a conference in, in our faculty. It was actually a, a, a symposium between the Toshisha University of Kyoto and uh, Tenda. And the professors of the uh, Toshisha came to Taiwan. They went to Ula immediately, and they wanted to watch the, uh, the uh, tribal dance there. Professor told me that uh, he had a little vest presented by the chief of the uh, tribe, and uh, told me that the tribe, that the chief was already 80 years old. He and his wife speaks or speak uh, fluent Japanese, but some of the Japanese different, slight, slightly different to, to the uh, modern Japanese because their grammar, their words, their vocabulary stays in the form of uh, Japanese before, before 1945. Right. So the contact uh, broke and the uh, Taiwanese Japanese didn't come kind of update with the Japanese uh, Japanese. That is for example, a friend of mine, Japanese, told me that uh, she went to the Hualien uh, to visit the tribes. Though so the tribe now were very hospitable kind of uh, warm and kind, ask her to uh, join them and even stay, stay over with them watching television. So the, she told me that the, the origin is called the television, called Tenji. Uh, the literally the direct translation of Dian Shi. Whereas in Japan the television is called Telebi. was actually the, the word television, Telebi. So this kind of uh, difference, noticeable. And of course, the, uh, the uh, aged people in Japan, they also find it very, they also find it very difficult to read newspapers, magazines, for example, a term called parasite or single, <laughs> means a parasite single, that uh, they, the, well, they, like they, you stay home, you don't want to leave the parents. 
you stay home as a single and as a parasite. It's the Japanese term called parasite or single. <laughs> well, so the uh, uh, now we discuss. I uh, just discuss with them the uh, Taiwanese accent. The Taiwanese Japanese accent was actually very similar to those of the uh, the uh, northern tea, northern part of Japan, because policemen were actually recruited from this area, in the Kyushu area, and they came to Taiwan with their accent and they taught the uh, little boys and girls with their accent, which is very interesting. And, but nevertheless, the uh, the uh, local people. The local Aboriginal people, aged especially, the senior citizens, they are still able to speak Japanese, one way or the other. And also the high school was actually established in Taiwan. In, as far as these educational affairs uh, goes, they speak trouble. As I mentioned, that the local people enjoy only four years of schooling. Where, uh, while the uh, Japanese boys and girls uh, went to a special primary school for six years and uh, learning material were actually totally different. So after the primary school, the local people could not enter the middle school because you have only four years of schooling. You have to, if you want to go to the middle school, you have to uh, pass the examination. And the Japanese were too poor, and what they learned, what they have learned, were too poor, so that they could never pass the examination. And uh, later on, the Taiwanese gentry felt it's necessary that to allow the kids, allow the offsprings, to enjoy education. And uh, one of the possibility would be the uh, schools established by the priests, the missionaries in Taiwan, like uh, the British as well as the uh, American missionaries in Taiwan. If, have you been to uh, Tanshui? There's a little school called uh, Tanshui, Zhongxue, Tanshui High School. It was actually a school run by the uh, Presbyterians. And uh, another school also been really run. In the Tanzu area, I think the uh, many of the priests were actually from Canada, all the uh, from the uh, Presbyterian churches. Um, and, uh, of course, then their teaching material is somewhat different. After the uh, high school, they were not allowed to enter the university in Taiwan. So some of them would have to go to Japan for further education. Some of them went to China, some of them went to the States. And here you can see that it was actually the Tainan High School. The school still exists. The buildings are there. For Tainan Erdo. And uh, when the 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 Shu uh, the, the Shuwa Emperor Shuwa was uh, from things he came to Taiwan to visit, and that was actually his visit to this uh, Thailand High School. The stage, the high school is only called Thailand High School, established only for the Japanese, teaching those uh, Japanese schoolboys in Taiwan. And uh, we should not forget, the boys and girls were separated in different schools. Like if you have been, have you been to a do you know where the uh, Zhongshan Luizhong in Tang'an Dongru is a girls' high school? There was actually the high school established for the uh, Japanese girls. Also, there was a university, there's a high school in Jinyi Road called Shida Fudong. It was also the first uh, boys' high school in Taipei County, and only accepting the uh, Japanese schools, uh, boys. Okay, then we talked about the uh, University of Taiwan, Taiwan University. You, have you been to the Taiwan University? See, the castle-like uh, portal is still there, right? And the entrance is still there, but uh, the building is all different. 
they always kind of a, uh, there's always critics of the Taiwan University. They never stop building. Uh, it was actually on the rice park built there in Gongdua. And that was actually the first buildings in this university. First of all, they had only uh, two or three departments, some graduate school institutes, for example, Institute for Anthropology, Institute for the, uh, uh, Political Science, and Institute for Literacy, and only few institutes there. Also, that's the you know the way the General Hospital of Taiwan University in Zhengairu, in this area, there was actually a medical school of the, uh, the Taiwan this governor. The, <coughs> the medical school there was actually, well the medical school was established rather early because uh, a lot of uh, Disease has to be fighted with. And uh, have you been, are, are you familiar with the term called barefoot doctors of mainland China? Those uh, little boys say after graduating from the uh, high school, they were trained for two years, give them the, medical, the basic medical training. They can serve as uh, the doctors in the countryside. The, the, the medical school of the Taiwanese government was actually the same thing. The people graduated from the high school would be trained there for two years and then they don't have the full license of a doctor. They cannot practice uh, anywhere else but in Taiwan. And uh, if you want to get the full license, you have to go to Japan or go to Manchuria then to study, but uh, the, 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 this medical school was actually the first part of the Taiwan University nowadays. It was merged to the newly established Taiwan University and became <coughs> the medical school of this university. And also the Japanese introduced their religion, the Shintoism, to Taiwan. This is actually the grant temple, uh, Japanese style. And other buildings were also uh, constructed in Taiwan. Some of them banks, some of them some uh, offices for uh, public use. For example, this one, the railroad board, or the administrative board of the railway. It, uh, it is actually a monument still there, existing something there in the uh, Bayman area. Have you been to uh, Bayman? You know where the North Gate is? The uh, Taipei Railway Station? Yeah. If you walk along with the, the Zhongxiao Xiro to the end, towards the Danshui River, you can see this building. It was actually a, a monument. And for, first of all, built as the railway board and still using it. Still used as the uh, by the uh, railway station, and this is actually the uh, Taito railway station. As you can see, that this is the fall of the uh, colonial style or the Japanese style, using bricks and this kind of design. This how these uh, no railway stations were actually built in this form or this style like a Taipei railway station, but now it's the Taipei railway station is the new one. When I was able to pass by the railway station every day, literally every day, just watch the uh, station. And this station just reminds me a lot of the Taipei railway station. And uh, this is actually the, uh, the government building of Tainan Prefecture, still there, using, still used by the uh, the, uh, as a city hall of the Tainan city, Tainan city also uh, constructed during this time. And this is the Taipei Broadcasting Station. This is certainly built much later because the uh, broadcasting system in Taiwan was only established in the 1930s. We should not forget a radio host. 
how much were the radio costs in, in the 1930s? Huh? In Germany, there's a statistic shows that the uh, the uh, station, uh, sorry, a radio of uh, Hitler's time cost you say three months' salary, and uh, people were actually crazy about having a a, a radio. They can listen to the programs at home. And uh, in Taiwan, the first radio broadcasting system was actually established in the 1930s. But you don't have, uh, people cannot afford a radio at home. So you have the uh, public buildings broadcasting as well as having a huge clock. So we always know the time by passing by, the, for example, the uh, post office, the railway station, and so on. And in the railway station, as well as in the Taipei Park, you can hear the, uh, the uh, broadcasting. And uh, the, funny, the thing was very funny. When I visited uh, Luoyang in Henan province, night, early 1990s, I remember when I went, it, I went to a restaurant having some tea and listened to the uh, radio the broadcasting uh, a talk show, which was very interesting, Xiang Chen. So I so it's a pity that I have to go and won't be able to finish this show. <laughs> On the streets, along the streets, everywhere you can see that you can hear the same re the, 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 the same station or same program. So the uh, public in Taiwanese or in Japanese called ho also broadcasting was very popular. 1970 something, I went to a Jiayi to visit a friend of mine, a classmate of mine. So it was a village. There was no, or hardly any telephone, private telephone. And a friend of mine's family runs the, uh, uh, the only shop for fertilizer, buying uh, grains and so on. And they have a telephone. So they have a broadcasting system. So whoever read, you have to read this shop and they kind of broadcast it for you. I say, someone you have a telephone, please come to my, my shop. And then later on, uh, someone was bike arrived. And this was actually the uh, broadcasting system in Taiwan. Very interesting. And nowadays you can see up here that everywhere you have the loudspeaker. Right? was popular because I think the habit said, remain, yes? Yeah. No, like the other day I watched the movie called Jump Machine. Yeah. Do you know this? Yeah, yeah. and they they have some kind of beeper and one person will call like a telecom company and the person there will take a message and you will call them back and they will give you the message. I've never I've never seen this but maybe it's, I thought maybe it's a Taiwanese thing. Uh, there are two different systems, right? First of all, you have a beeper. Yeah, yeah. If you, I bring the, the number, your number will be shown in the beeper. Then you can yeah. call back. There was actually things before the mobile phone. Yeah. It's called a beeper, a pager. Yes, yeah. All right, that's one thing. Uh, another thing would be that uh, you don't want to leave anything, right? Therefore, you just call ring, to keep, uh, to ring the sender, the sender will tell you. Yeah, this one. Yeah, that, this, yeah. Yeah, that, okay. yeah, you join the the, the, the the service, and you have a certain number, so they will ring. Well, if they want someone to pass message to you, they can ring the center, and the center will kind of beep you. Well, there was history. <laughs> <laughs> now there's even the the house phone is actually a history. You don't need house phone. Everybody needs a mobile phone. So how do you now move the gesture of making phone calls? You used to do this, right? And now, what do you do? I still do this. Still do this? What's different now? So time changes. So I think there will be a day that people it's never know what a house phone is. 
So, this is the uh, Bank of Taiwan, which is of great importance. Because the Bank of Taiwan was in charge of the uh, uh, issuing currency for Taiwan. And also for financing the Japanese uh, companies uh, or, or personal or the uh, private uh, investors to go to Southeast Asia. So Taiwan, as I mentioned, after 1930-something, the, uh, the function of Taiwan changed and became the uh, supporting point, the base for the Japanese South expansion policy. And the Bank of Taiwan was actually in charge of the uh, uh, financing. So the Japanese company who wish to go to Southeast Asia can get a loan here in Taiwan by with the uh, Bank of Taiwan. So the building was actually built much, much later, but uh, it's still there. Have you been? Have you seen this building? Not far, just right across the road of the uh, president's office. The building is still there. It's still in the same style. And here you can see that the Taiwanese currency in 1932, right, which was the banknote of Taiwan, Taiwan Yinghang. Banknote, uh, 10 yen, or 10 yen at that stage could mean a fortune really. And uh, all the things here you can see. The Japanese, this is the, 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 the pictures here, the Japanese Shinto temple, also a very uh, it's Japanese. And the funny thing is that this bank of, uh, the banknote issued by the Bank of Taiwan. They are only valid in Taiwan. You cannot read abroad. Right? Well, think about it. If it is a Japanese colony, we should spend Japanese money. Right? But why would you Think about it in, in, in Kwan, in Hawaii, all these American colonies. What kind of currency do they use? Well, not even American colonies. In Taiwan, if we used to produce the million dollars, it will still be accepted. right? But just literally or deliberately, the Taiwanese government kind of uh, combined the circulation of Taiwanese banknote only on this island. And another interesting thing is in Kamoi, in Jinmen, or in Mazu, this is actually under the Taiwanese control, the currency there, the banknotes there, what do you think they use? Huh? The Taiwanese money or not? Uh -huh. They use Taiwanese banknote, but uh, with a special print on it, only, only to be circulated in circulated in Jinmen or Mazu, not in Taiwan. This banknote cannot be uh, brought to Taiwan. It won't be accepted in Taiwan. The same thing, uh, but only with uh, extra prints. Okay, this is the uh, Bank of Taiwan um, today. Then, this is the Industrial Bank of Japan, a high office in Taiwan. Uh, as I, again, the, uh, when Japanese decided to turn Taiwan into a middleman for the Japanese uh, colonial expansion, then they decided to invest on Taiwan. For example, they, uh, they need a lot of uh, aluminium for the uh, aviation industry. The, the alu aluminium was actually, can only be won through the uh, Certain earths, such certain uh, mines, arrive uh, from Indonesia. So they brought all these uh, mines from Indonesia to Taiwan using the cheap uh, power, the electricity, to produce the uh, aluminium uh, bars, and then all the uh, aluminium bars will be then posted, uh, sent, shipped to Japan for the. Uh, uh, the uh, aviation industry. Therefore, the uh, 
the uh, industry or some of the uh, working plants were actually established in Taiwan after the 1930s, then the financing will be uh, for financing issues will be provided by Japanese. So therefore, you have the uh, branch of the Industrial Bank of Japan in Taiwan. And the Takao Harbor was also a very interesting story because uh, the site, the, you can see the geo geographical situation of Taiwan lying south to, the, uh, to Japan. So, <clears throat> the, first of all, the Japanese built the railway, railway system from the central part of Taiwan to the Jilong. Because the Jilong, there is a famous harbor there. Uh, you take liners from Jilong to, to, to Kyushu, to Japan, to Osaka. So, the first harbor, or the first railway system was actually uh, built, uh, in the, well, concentrated on the uh, Jilong Harbor. And Takao, the Kaohsiung Harbor, was totally neglected because there is no such necessity. What can you do with the harbor in Takao, in the south tip of Taiwan? But later on, as I said, in the 1930s, when Japanese decided to expand down to Southeast Asia, then the harbor would be useful for Gandhi. So therefore, after the 1930s, the Japanese started to build the uh, harbor in, in Tainan, uh, sorry, in Kaohsiung. Nowadays in Kaohsiung. And uh, there is also the Ali San rail system. Have you been to Ali San? Uh, most of the timbers uh, got in Ali San were sent to Japan for the building because Japanese love to build wooden structure houses, especially temples. It's near Jai. Jai, it is in Jai. They have like special railway systems. Yeah, because of the, you have to go up, so yeah, up, up hills, so you have to go this way, Twi Twinty and Bendy, right? Yeah, So that's the Arizan rail. You also have a little small rail in Luodong to reach the Taiping Shan forest, uh, just to, to, in order to get the uh, timber for, to be shipped to Japan. So this kind of rail system was also means to get the forests to get the timber. And uh, this timber, for example, this wooden structure were all built there in, in with the Taiwanese, uh, especially Hinoki, a special type of wood, the uh, best wood for the Japanese style uh, building. And some, uh, some of the timber, when you tear down the old houses, the timbers are there. You just kind of uh, get rid of the, the, the top, top layer, right? In the middle, there's really the smell of the inoki is uh, still very strong. Then, in the 1930, there was an incident that we have already introduced. Uh, so, we uh, jump, uh, skip the thing. So then the third stage, the uh, again we have the uh, military as general governor general. The uh, I mean obviously between Ch Japan and China became more and more noticeable. Then the war seems to be uh, inevitable. So Japan decided to turn Taiwan into a base for future warfare. Also, the southbound expansion uh, was very important because only through these activities Japan can acquire the natural resources in Southeast Asia. Well, uh, to reach this goal, they have to build up a strong navy and uh, Taiwan have to serve as the naval base and later on as the uh, Air base, air, air force base. From 1936, admirals were again sent to Taiwan, and uh, there was the first one, uh, Kobayashi. The Kobayashi was almost certainly an admiral, 
He ruled Taiwan for four years and was recalled to Japan, serving in the ministry. And then the Hasekawa, also admiral. And the last stage, actually, the Japanese all could already uh, notice that the, the defeat was actually inevitable. And then the Ando was set in Taiwan. He was again the general because the warfare or, or the it seems it seems that the, the enemies want to launch to Japan very to, to Taiwan very soon. The Ando served in Taiwan uh, as the uh, last general, governor general, Ando Rikiji. And then the, 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 towards the end of the Second World War, the big three met in Cairo. You can see the church, Churchill, uh, Roosevelt, and Chiang Kai-shek. They decided that Taiwan must be returned to China. And uh, the powers followed or, or kept this uh, decision, or this promise. Therefore, you see that Taiwan was actually uh, returned to China. And this is the first picture taken. And then, the, you know, that after that, soon after that, the uh, Arabah incidents followed. So that's the uh, materials we have for tonight. And uh, we have a few minutes, few minutes, few minutes break, and I show you the film.